Hello everyone, and welcome back to Classics World of Family. Today is one of the greatest Christmas stories ever written, one of the greatest ghost stories ever written, and one of the greatest time traveling stories ever written. It is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Now you all know the story. So I figure, why tell it to you? Of course, granted, Scrooge is often played by an actor much older than he should be when you take his nephew's age into consideration. Fred has to be what? Early twenties, and Scrooge Ebenezer Scrooge was not that much older than his sister Fan. He's got to be in his early forties, so. Moving on. First up is the 1951 screen adaptation starring Alistair Sim. It's very basic. It's rated G. Of course, there's not that much you can do to deviate from the source material. Of course, what makes it so basic is the ghosts not really Being that creative in appearance, it's essentially the same thing as with all. Granted, it is in black and white, so we don't see the ghost of Christmas present age, he just vanishes. And if you're wondering who plays the Ghost of Christmas Present, it is none other than Francis de Wolf. Yes, the same person who went on to play Fwant de Buff in Richard Thorpe's Ivanhoe. Of course, he'd also go on to, to provide the voice of Smog in BBC's audio adaptation of The Hobbit. And he also played a captain in The Three Musketeers, directed by Richard Lester. So, basically, Francis de Wolf has had, well, I shouldn't say has had, since he's now dead. He had a very ranged group of roles. Moving on, in 1978, we were given... An American Christmas Carol, which is set in Great Depression, United States. We have Henry Winkler as Benedict Slade. Our Scrooge. And it's really good. The thought of hell not being... Fire and brimstone, but just reliving your worst decisions over and over again is quite terrifying. When Jack Latham, our Marley, appears, he says there is a king that has to constantly stare at the faces of men he sent off to war, and there's a politician trapped in a room with every speech he ever made where he made the wrong decision playing over and over again. It is quite terrifying. But what about the ghosts? 
Well, they're actually played by members of the cast. One of them is played by the same actor who plays a bookstore owner, where Benedict Snaind repossesses everything, including a first edition copy of You Guessed It, A Christmas Carol. Another ghost is played by the same actor who plays an orphan or the um, administrator. And what gets repossessed from him is the orphanage's piano, which brings so much happiness to the people there. But most interesting of all would have to be Dorian Harewood. Harewood, Harewood, I don't know. Or as the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Besides the ghost who is in 1970s clothing, we also have him playing a farmer who gets things we possess by Snade as well. Including a radio which is used quite well for signaling a ghost's appearance. As I said, it takes place in the Great Depression, so Naturally, it's in the 1930s, but when the ghost of Christmas past appears, the radio ends up playing news of the stock market crash. Very interesting. And naturally, when the ghost of Christmas yet to come appears, the music is 70s disco. It's a very good movie. And besides that, you have Chris Riggins. The actor who originated the voice of Marvel and Thor playing the Fezzy Rig equivalent. It's a, uh, moving on, we have the George C. Scott adaptation. As I said, there's not much you can do to change it. it it's basic. You've once again, and which I don't see this happening that often. You have the ghosts of Christmas past being extinguished by Scrooge. Wait with that candle cap being put over her, him, I don't rightly know what to call upon the ghost of Christmas past, because there's been so many portrayals, be it by man or woman, adult or child, the ghost of Christmas past remains one of the stranger ones, because the candle-like luck of the book isn't that easy to keep in. Thus, you're left to wonder how the Ghost of Christmas Past will come looking. The Ghost of Christmas Present isn't that different, but and once again we don't see him aging. And to the best of my memory, we never actually seen the ghost of Christmas yet to come on screen. We only see his, hers, its shadow. And 
and hearing the sound of a graveyard gate screeching. Besides George C. Scott, we have David Warner, no, really, the same man who provided the voice of Ray Shawn Goon for Batman the Animated Series, and the Archmage and Gargoyles, and some villain in The Legend of Prince Valiant as Bob Cratchit. All things considered, he does it quite well. Moving on, we've got... The Muppet Christmas Carol. This guy that keeps on out of the narrative end by having Gonzo as... The narrator, Charles Dickens himself. The Ghost of Christmas Past is interesting. For some reason, the Ghost of Christmas Present reminds me of both Hagrid and Storic Levast, so... On the one hand, I'm reminded of the Harry Potter franchise. On the other hand... I remember I ended up the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. Of course, until I had even heard of those series, I wouldn't have made the connection. And I believe the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, that puppet was at least, I don't know, seven, maybe eight feet tall. It's very impressive. Michael Caine is amazing. <clears throat> now for the film from Jet Lake Productions. It's average. The only ghost that really looks different is the Ghost of Christmas Past, and I have no idea how. Well, it's not exactly, but Jet Lake didn't have the biggest budget, so I'm not sure how they could have made the candle look, look convincing. Oh, that's right, ratings. So I almost forgot. But it'll go back. An American Christmas Carol, not rated. The George C. Scott film. Oh, there we go, it's rated G. Did I miss the Canadian rating? Not rated. Muppet Christmas Kiln is G. This honestly isn't anything bad. It's average. The it's acceptable for everyone. And moving on, we have yet another animated screen adaptation from 1997, where Tim Curry provided the voice of Scrooge. It's very good. And you've got Michael New York as Bob Cratchit, and Whoopi Goldberg as the Ghost of Christmas Present. An interesting choice, and... Yes, we do see her age. It's got excellent music. We've got Jody Benson as the voice of Scrooge's former fiance Belle. Ed Asner as Jacob Marley. I'm serious, this really is good. And the inclusion of Scrooge having a dog named Debit is interesting because it humanizes Scrooge from the beginning. 
And now for the last one and the most faithful one in this collection. The film was released in 2009. And it has Jim Carrey as each of the ghosts. And Scrooge. We've got Gary Oldman as Morley and Bob Cratchit. And as a whole, it's very much the most faithful one. You've even got the ghost of Christmas past looking like a candle. But as I said, this is not that hard of a book to stray from. Merry Christmas.